so important. Welcome to Sydney. How Thank are you enjoying you. your stay so far? Well, it's yeah. very short. It's very short. I've been here before, but not for 25 years. Wow. Um, I love this city. I think it's beautiful, absolutely spectacular. And, you know, it's a funny thing. I remember the first time we arrived here, which was even longer ago, that you feel a real energy when you enter this country. I mean, a physical energy. Mm -hmm. And the light is quite different. Maybe that's what makes us feel energised. It's all shiny and sunny. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. it is. Um, so you're only here for a few days. Yeah, sadly. You're here to promote Quartet. Sure. Uh, so number one, how did you get involved with the film? How did you get the role of Sissy? Well, I found out later that I got the role because Maggie Smith and Tom Courtney both suggested me for it to Dustin, which was lovely. But I first heard about it when I had a phone call. Um, would I read a script and would I accept a call from Dustin Hoffman? Yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> so I had a, a two-hour chat with him and I felt I knew him at the end of it. Um, he's a very accessible person, a really good communicator. And, um, I, I mean, it's really interesting for someone like me because I, I haven't had a big film career. It came very late and it's comparatively small. So I'm always astonished when anybody thinks of me for anything. And I thought, well, how, how did it go? I said, have you seen anything I've done? He said, um, I saw you do an interview on a red carpet. That's what I want. So I thought, <laughs> what about all my other jobs? <laughs> I, and what was he like to work with as a director? Because obviously he's known as an incredible actor. Yes. And now he's behind the camera. Yeah, he's a wonderful director. He's, um, he's a teacher, like many good directors are. He's a real good teacher, and he also has the ability to be wrong, to accept that he's wrong if things aren't working, um, which I love. Um, and he also has very kind of uh, innovative ideas. Which, I mean, he was lucky to have a producer in Fanola Dwyer, mm. who's from Sydney, who gave him the freedom to you know, be free and improvise which I love, even though we're doing it with Sir Ronald Harwood's script. Yes. Um, he was willing for that to happen. Uh, it takes time, stuff like that. Mm. To, and we did little rehearsal, not very much, but so we were doing a lot on the day. And sometimes it does loosen the drama if you're able to use your own words, because the play was actually written 25 years ago, I think. Mm. So it just gives you a freedom. And... Sir Ronald loves it, apparently. He's very happy with it, so that's great. Had you seen the play before? before you I came? never had. I knew about it, but I'd seen some of his other plays, but not that one, no. And uh, I mean, you say you got a phone call from Dustin Hoffman. Do you still get starstruck going, Completely. wow, I've got this Hollywood C icon? On Completely. I mean, I couldn't believe it. Nor that he was on for so long. <laughs> you know, that was... And I kept saying, well, I think i better go now. He said, yeah, yeah, and then he'd go into another. But he loves the telephone. He loves... He talks and thinks on the telephone, and and during the work, he would often phone up and say, I've got, I've got to have an idea for tomorrow. I want you to write a scene. So he'd say, oh, OK, homework, yeah. <laughs> and obviously, I guess for people who do, did know the play, and looking at the cast involved, he's a very interesting choice to be director, because it's a very, very British British cast, yes. opera, mm -hmm. about which he professes to know nothing he had all these wonderful real musicians and real singers uh, to join us, you know, in mm. the supporting roles. Um, it was a tremendously brave choice. And to shoot it in England. Yes. But he does love England. He has a home there. And, uh, I mean, not for you working on the film, I mean, I guess many of the cast you knew. Yes. You know, because it is I mean, a fantastic group of actors there. I mean, what was it like working with... Maggie and Michael and... Well, Maggie I'd worked with before. Um, and uh, Tom Courtney I had known socially through the years because it, my husband, John Alderton, is from Hull, so is Tom. Tom was his head boy at grammar school. Yeah. So they've known each other a very long time. And Billy and John met in the 70s in the BBC club in Glasgow and they played snooker for eight or nine hours all night long. Mm -hmm. um, and with a little bit of the, the hard stuff on the yes. side to help them along. Lubrication. Lubrication, yes. So they all remember that. They always remember that that night of snooker. <laughs> uh, so I, I got to know Billy uh, during the course of the shoot, and he's he's a really sweet person. He's very very funny, but also very very clever. Very he knows a lot about a lot of things about, about music. <coughs> Excuse me. And uh, literature, 
art. He's very widely read. And, and you mentioned there there was a little bit of improvisation. I mean, when Billy was involved, yes, I, I guess that went on all, all kinds of directions. It did, and, and Michael Gambon too. Mm. I mean, you switch Michael Gambon on behind, and he can go on forever. Um, all of us, and of course, as a director, Dustin has to teach us discipline and, and keep us from going too far into the realms of no possibility. Uh, do you have a favourite favorite memory of the shoot, looking back at it now? I think probably the first time we sang, although you don't see us, you don't hear us in the final cut, we sang the quartet together. It was in the, the central hall of the house, Beecham House, and we had the musicians and we had the audience and the lighting. And it was quite moving and it was very joyous. And to see all us oldies having a moment of glory before we die <laughs> was lovely. I liked that. I really enjoyed that feeling. And, and for the role of Sissy, I mean, did you do any research or when you got the script and obviously I guess she's up kind of the outset of Alzheimer's and she's getting forgetful. Yes. In terms of researching a character, did you look into I had family members. Like yeah, that yeah. dropped down. That I, yeah. I wondered if you were going to stop. <laughs> it was good. It's okay where it is. We'll just uh, ask <coughs> the other question again. Oh, oh. <coughs> so, uh, did you do much research for the character Sissy? Because obviously she's in the outset of Alzheimer's and forgetting things and the rest of the house are uh, noticing how where she's getting. Yeah. Did you do any research for she's, She doesn't have Alzheimer's. Mm -hmm because that's the one where you have plaque in the brain. Mm. She has vascular dementia, yeah. which members of my family had. Mm. Um, and I, I thought that was a better th way of playing that mental problem because with vascular dementia, the, the person still remains, yeah. you know. And in Sissy, sometimes she's okay and she's full of joy. Sometimes she's uh, disinhibited, mm. which is something that happens to dementia people. And she just goes a little too far, like when she talks and talks to Maggie and drives her mad and Maggie whacks her with a bunch of flowers. Mm -hmm. um, and then she has real episodes where, yes. in a flash, she goes from being a 70-year-old to being 17 again mm. and climbing on a boat bound for England from India, yes. which was her history in the past. Um, but I, the thing I like about her is that she... She tries to continue to function. She mm. she conceals the dementia as much as she can. Yes. And and she's also very loving to all of them and very grateful mm. for the support of the two boys. They're like her two knights in shine, shining armour. Yeah, yeah, and she is a character almost who brings everyone together and holds everyone together. I think she does, yes, because she was always the one probably who took them out when they were on tour. You know, she'd mm. be the one who'd say, I found a great club and here's a nice place to go for a meal. Maggie would be too grand, Maggie's <laughs> character. I mean, I mean, you mentioned about your film career, but obviously you're obviously very much known for your TV from upstairs, downstairs, yes. and, and you've done stuff like Doctor Who and all sorts of British TV shows. Yeah. I mean, how do you find the difference between working on TV and working on film? Well, the luxury of time is one thing. Mm. Although really, really low-budget films, you have to work pretty quickly. Um, but I, you just feel a little freer in, in film, I mm. think. And also a lot of television now tends to be formulaic because uh, what used to be decided by one man, by a producer, yeah. when I was young, now takes a committee of 10 mm -hmm. and, and 17 more upstairs. It's interesting to remember back, you know, for my husband John and I, jobs were done on a handshake. You know, mm. you'd say, I have this idea and take it to Michael Grade and he'd say, OK, shake hands. And it was done like that. Mm. Now it's much, much harder. I think it's very hard for young writers with wonderful ideas to get into the business. And young performers too, mm. unless they get into a soap. I mean, uh, and looking back at your career, I mean, for characters like Shirley Valentine, mm. I mean, do you have a favourite film or TV production that you've worked on? That, which one kind of gives you the most fondness? I love Shirley Valentine uh, because I loved it as a stage play and I love the sentiments in it and um, and Willie's a wonderful writer, Willie Russell. I love this film. I think it's very interesting to have a film about older people who are just trying hard to keep going. Mm. They're not whinging and they, uh, and also they conceal their ills a little bit. Apart from occasionally you see Will who has problems with his waterworks. Yes. 
having a pee up against a tree, <laughs> a anywhere, anytime, <laughs> in front of anybody. He doesn't mind. Uh, I mean, is that, is that one of the main things, I mean, obviously, apart from the fact that Dustin Hoffman, Hoffman gave you a call, yes. one of the things that attracted you to the script? Yes, I mean, I, I think it's a, it was a wonderful play. I mean, although I never saw it, I read it. Um, and the sentiments are wonderful. And the idea that these people are still themselves. And what was interesting, because we're all of an age, um, you know, Michael Gammon and Dustin and everybody, it felt like a reunion of old school friends or college mm. friends. We all had common memories. And, um, and it, I think it made us all feel a bit younger again. And I guess also being amongst, I mean, you mentioned it briefly earlier, like, I mean, during the end credits when you're going through all the yes. people in there and you realise who they are. Yeah, all the musicians. Mm. Oh, yeah. It's an amazing group of people. Wonderful, absolutely. Just to hang around with and, and hear this. They're wonderful. And also musicians do play all the time, mm. you know, so during our off moments you'd sit down with a cup of tea and there'd be someone on the piano and somebody would come in with a viola and vamp a little bit. <laughs> I mean, what was the, the shoot at Headsaw House? I mean, that must have been wonderful just to be in those fantastic grounds for oh, a period of time. I mean, how beautiful. long did it take to shoot? I think we were 10 weeks, 8 or 10 weeks, I can't quite remember. So not very long, mm. um, but it's a spectacular place. The, some of the views, some of the shots down the valley are beautiful. It's not a very big house, mm. it's quite small, so it was perfect for this because, you know, you began to get the feeling that you were in a real... A real home. And and during the shoot, I mean, you say you've like worked with Maggie before. I mean, how is it when you're working with someone you know as a, as a friend and you've worked with them before? Yes. And then I guess it's part of acting, you know. Uh, and then working opposite them as a different character. I mean, do you like working with people you worked with before? I do. do yeah. You like fresh faces. Obviously? I like everything. I like mm. fresh faces too. Um, I like whatever's handed to me, because you do when you work with someone you've worked with before. You do. Uh, you, you trust each other. I yeah. think Maggie and I trust each other. Um, but then if you work with someone that you don't know at all, you sometimes get wonderful surprises mm. and sometimes rotten surprises. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, I mean, obviously, this, this film is coming out here uh, and it's already opened in England, so what have you got next? So it you hasn't opened in England yet. Oh, it hasn't? No, oh. no. It opens in England after you. You're the first in oh. the world here on Boxing Day. Mm. And then in the US on the 28th, and January the 1st in England. Oh, that was it, because I saw footage, so it must have been the premiere, was it the London Film Festival? Yeah, the it? London Film Festival, yes, that's and right. So how was that, doing the red carpet in Leicester Square, well, I assume? Well, my worry always is what to wear, I'm hopeless at that, <laughs> but I found something. <laughs> um, but it's great, I mean, it was lovely. It wasn't quite Twilight. No. <laughs> um, I, I looked at some of those poor kids on Twilight, they looked quite frightened on that red carpet, because mm. the screen, I mean, it was like more than the Beatles, screaming people, and you felt they were all going to break through and eat them. <laughs> I mean, just quickly to end, I mean, and I guess you touched on it briefly already, but I mean, you've got, had a wonderful long career, and but you're now in an industry which is, I guess, very, very different from when you started. Yes. I mean, do you look at films now, the big blockbusters, and think, wow, I mean, where has this industry gone? No. Um, I look at them, some of them I like, some of them... I am not so keen on. Mm. I loved The Matrix. I thought that was, you know, fantastic. I find Transformers a bit harder for someone like me. Would you like to do a big action film? Uh, I think I'd look a bit silly, wouldn't I? <laughs> My best action was probably done in Doctor Who in the later one, because I, I was in it in the 60s. Yes. And then I played Queen Victoria, who was bitten by a werewolf. So I'm probably a werewolf. <laughs> I'm hoping to come back. Fantastic. Thank you so much. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. Lovely talking to you. Thank you. Thanks a lot.